Assalamu alaikum, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you're watching me right now. I can't believe we are six episodes deep in Mohsen Ki Betak series. I'm so glad you're enjoying them and have given me the confidence to come up and share my stories with you. Thank you and I'm looking forward to sharing much more with you as we go along. Uh, so today we'll talk about something I've come to peace with fairly recently and are still trying to understand uh, the very word failure. Now before I comment on the concept and how I dealt with it or how I deal with it in my journey in life, I would like to confess that I am a consistent and a successful failure and I'm proud of it. There is nothing I would want to take away from that. Often you get to see, if you follow me on social media, or you'll get to see some accomplishments uh, posted here and there. And you might think this person is going places or is, ach is achieving blah, blah, blah. But remember that is masked uh, with, if not thousands, but hundreds of rejections, disillusionments, disappointments, and a lot of self-struggle. So, and I'm sure everyone goes through that. And we just like to put out there what we want people to appreciate on and we hide the things which we are not very proud of or not very confident on. So we all have our different struggles. So as, a, as an individual, I have a lot of struggles as well, but that might not be exhibited on my personality through social media or elsewhere. So as we go along today's session, I will share with you my some of my stories of epic failures and rock bottoms. Also, I could have named this uh, session anything, you know, I could, uh, uh, not anything really, but I could have, uh, I wanted to name it success first. But I think success is an overrated term. The real bad boy is failure, which needs attention. Uh, we really need to talk about the word failure, which we fear so much. So what is failure? Is failure the absence of success? Is failure uh, lack of desired outcomes or not being able to achieve a certain objective? Is it a mistake? Is it bad experiences? Is it being tied to loser or an epic fail or a failure? Well, good or bad, Oscar Wilde thinks that experience is the name everyone gives to their mistakes. Now, for something to fall under the criteria of being a failure is very context dependent. You need to understand it's a very relative term, so it's very subjective. It's heavily dependent on the context of use and on the belief system or the uh, mindset of, the, of a particular person. So a situation might be considered a failure by one person and the same situation might be considered a success by another. So it really, the degree of success or failure may be very differently viewed under different perspectives and by different people. So you need to understand that it's a very uh, fluid term. So there is no one such thing as failure. It is something our mind sort of perceives that something not going in the right direction or something going in the right direction or so far. So, so when did I think, or when do I think I feel, given that it's a very fluid term, right? So when do I feel that uh, I feel myself or I need to, uh, or I doubt myself in that regard? I think I failed every time I've doubted myself. I fail when every time I've given in to the societal pressure, the pressure of peers around me. I have hit rock bottom every time I feared others, feared making others happy at the expense of my own happiness and my own uh, uh, willingness to a certain change or uh, just being myself. And the only, but every time I have been hit to that rock bottom, I am sure I know that the only way, and that is the only way to go from that rock bottom is up, right? You can't go further down. So that, has some, that is something that induces self-courage to move on and 
go on. So remember, life is a long journey. People always say life is a very short journey. And of course, in a more, uh, depending on your religious views, you know how long this journey is. And then there might be an eternal journey waiting for you at the other end of uh, this journey. But I also think this particular life journey is difficult. It's full of highs and a lot of rock bottoms. Uh, what you need to do is you just need to keep moving and you need to manage your course just like a good sailor would, not being afraid to lose the sight of the shoreline and just keep moving in that sea in the direction which will, wherever it takes you, right? But having a perspective and having a vision where you really want to go. I think you cannot fully live this life if you're not afraid of hitting rock bottoms. Uh, so... Thomas Watson said that if you want to succeed, you want to double your failure rate, right? You need to fail more. And to fail more, you should be willing to take more risk and challenge yourself. I think this is something uh, I always said and I really believe is uh, nothing ever comes from comfort zones or nothing ever great comes from comfort zone. So you need to push yourself in the direction where you challenge yourself. And uh, there is more risk of failure because you're going in a new territory where that's unexplored and you might uh, want to uh, uh, feel, uh, you might want more people to be around you or more, uh, some sort of assurance that all is going to be well, but you might not have that. But that is the real challenge and risk you're willing to take. Now I'll give you an example of uh, how you might perceive it as a failure or success for my personal life. So one fine day, uh, me and my twin brother had, a, had an idea for a big shot school in Pakistan. We printed a few papers, we sit in the car, and we go to the school's uh, head office in Pakistan. We are told at the reception to wait and wait and wait. We waited for eight long hours. This was a test of ego, patience, respect, uh, dignity, <laughs> everything we could think of. Uh, you know, they, want, they just wanted us to leave, but we did not. At the turn of uh, it, after the turn of waiting for so long, there was an opportunity hidden, which might not have exhibited to two 16-year-old boys if they would have gotten up and left disillusioned or disappointed. So you see, my very perception of failure in that moment really could have made it an epic fail, or at the end of it was an opportunity waiting. If I would have, if we would have given up at that moment, it was failure. And since we did not, it was success for us. And once we got the opportunity, let me tell you what, what I did. On the very first day of work, I took a marker and wrote my name on the glass window. Like literally, as I entered the room, I was so obsessed with <laughs> what, what was offered to me that I wrote immediately without having, you know, you have name plates outside your room and stuff. We was a 16 years old uh, uh, in terms of people working here and there, and people didn't take us seriously. So I was so obsessed with my work. I went on and wrote my name on that window pane. And I still remember a few people passed by, laughed, and I felt so stupid and bad at that point. But today, when I look back at that moment, I have nothing to regret because I now understand why did I uh, perform that action or why did I act that way? I think that was when I really felt it was that real quest for that moment, you know, how I waited for hours in that lobby for get, being given that opportunity. When I got it, I clinched on it. And I was so proud of myself and my, uh, abilities really that I just uh, wanted to make sure of it and clinch to that success. So it's a very relative term. It's very fluid. It might seem failure at that moment, but in the long run, it's making you who you are. Today, if I go through rejections, disillusionments, disappointments, I still keep my head high because I know somewhere it's the same 16-year-old boy who will not give up on 
himself, not others, but yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Just keep going. And since then, countless of examples and stories in the life and so much so, I have concluded one thing is for sure. There are no secrets. There is no, as uh, if you've seen Kung Fu Panda, you would know there is no secret ingredient. The secret ingredient is you yourself. Yes, a little luck and a little prayer from your family or your loved ones, but a lot of hard work. And as I may say, a lot of smart work preparation and willingness to fail you know you need to be willing to fail only then you would be able to achieve uh, what you really want to achieve churchill winston churchill once said success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that counts don't lose that courage don't lose that uh, willingness to change and not be apprehensive of change in your life and around you. So going back to what I said earlier, it's a process of highs and lows. It's not something final. If I've had, if I've hit rock bottom now, there is a path beyond it. There is going back up. But then if I'm already at the uh, top, do you think I'll always stay at the top? I don't think so, because the space at, at the above is always empty. There's always someone that can come above you. So you need to be courageous and you need to be uh, willing to feel so badly that it shouldn't hurt you, but it has to come up with a great deal of preparation. Now, how can you prepare yourself? You need to be self-motivated. You need to have the willingness and the ability to stand in the center of your own peace and uh, uh, motivation, even when life is throwing a lot of storms at you. So you need to be self-motivated and driven. You need to be courageous from within. Apart from that, you could be uh, you could be well prepared through your knowledge you could be well prepared through your bad experiences or good experiences learning from your mistakes learning from the mistakes of others and not repeating those failures which might have led you to that one rock bottom but having said that that doesn't mean that you need to give up if you're going through the same cycle again and again we all have the ability to be given another chance to relive life in the way we want to live it in the first place so don't give up on uh, yourself that easily uh, be confident and be ready to be a person or professional failure and then you'll see that you'll have this surge of energy that nobody uh, could offer elsewise to you so that's that's one of the stories i could share Another story, if I were to share of my personal failure, if I very recently, uh, so I applied to one of the fellowships uh, at the prestigious university uh, in the UK, and uh, I realized there was something different this time when I was applying. I wasn't afraid. Uh, uh, I didn't have that uh, sense of clinging cl to it, just like I had when I was a 16-year-old boy. I had grown up and I had matured up as a person and realized that my center of reality of my individual strengths would still stay there. This is an added advan adv uh, advantage. If this happens, well and good. If it doesn't, nothing is going to hurt my uh, center of gravity. So this is something you need to understand. And I think it's a journey and it's a process. And we all are at different stages of this process. Uh, so I had this personal struggle and I'm still trying to understand my reaction that why I didn't react in a certain way as someone else would have. So uh, what I've realized or what I've concluded is that uh, my definition of success and failure has is now different than it was before. I now see success as 
a very personal thing, like something in my heart, rather than something that has to be exhibited to all the world and seek uh, uh, accreditation or uh, accolades and uh, respect from others. It doesn't matter to me now. So what I've done is really I managed my expectations. So this was the last point I really wanted to make because yes, you need to be prepared. You need to do a lot of hard work. You need to have willingness to fail but you also need to manage your expectations from yourself and from others. You know, if you're an overthinker, an overachiever, and you want to do everything in a, and you're a perfectionist and you want everything done in a certain way, you would never be really satisfied and happy. So you really have to define these uh, boundaries of expectations for you to feel like Yes, you have achieved a certain thing and not comparing yourself to more successful people or others all the time. Yes, doing it sometimes is good. It gives you an impetus to do more, but not overdoing anything. So life looks better. Uh, uh, there's a quote, happiness is a, constru uh, it's a construct of your own self. So life is nothing it's your thinking which makes it good or bad. So think positive, be courageous, be willing to fail, but be prepared to deal with it as well. Uh, and that's all about uh, in today's episode that I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much for watching today's uh, episode. If you want to share your uh, personal stories of failure or have any questions or feedback, you can inbox us at the pay in Greenbox page or you can write to me at mosin at the gbox.org. Next week, we will talk more about how we can manage our expectations from ourselves and others. Until next week, please take care and have a great weekend. Bye.